Hi, I'm Kim Corbin, the Social Media Manager at New World Library. I had great fun today sitting down with our publisher and co-founder, Mark Allen, to talk about his new book, The Magical Path, and how it can help us create the life of our dreams and a world that works for all. I hope you'll enjoy our interview. The title of your new book is The Magical Path, which certainly describes your personal path as publisher at New World Library, which you co-founded 35 years ago with Shakti Gawain. Will you give us the short version of your story and how it ultimately resulted in this book? The short version, well, the day I turned 30, I woke up in a state of shock, realizing I wasn't a kid anymore. I had no money, I had no job, and I realized I had no direction in my life whatsoever. Through my 20s, I'd wandered around and I'd done a lot of things. I had one very important key, and that was I knew it was important to do what I loved but I had no idea how to be successful doing what I loved. That was the part I was missing. The day I turned 30, I remembered a little exercise I'd played years ago and a little meditation I'd found in a little book on Western magic I'd read, where you just relax and do this meditation called the middle pillar meditation, just pretending a pillar of light is going through your body, and then you just visualize what you want in life. And I laid down and did that. I'm so lazy, I do it flat on my back. And I imagined five years had passed and everything had gone as well as my life, as well as I could imagine. What would my life look like? And what I saw, much to my amazement, was this publishing company. I would had no interest in business whatsoever. The company published my books. I'd never written a book. And my music. I'd never record, recorded my music. And I had a big white home on a hill in Marin County. At the time, I had a little slum apartment in Oakland, a little <laughs> one-room apartment in a slum area. So it was very far from my current reality at the time. But I actually magically visualized the life I wanted in five years, and it included this publishing company. And I just kept focusing on it in spite of all the doubts and fears that just nearly overwhelmed me saying it's way too much mark i remember them vividly i remember the doubts and fears word for word they even said you want to start a company and start writing books and record music and get into real estate that's way too much pick one thing just pick one thing they said and focus on that but i thought about it and i thought no the whole point of this little exercise is to imagine my ideal and my ideal is a successful company and writing books and recording music and even, as I thought it through, having a life of ease. And so I just had this vision of this dream and I said, I'm going to focus on that and go for it. And the first little steps became obvious. And I started telling people right from the beginning that it was all created magically. And even in my book on visionary business that I did in the 90s, it, on the 11th chapter, I get into the magic side of it. The 11th chapter is called, Consider the Mystical and Spiritual Side of Success. Practice your own effective magic. And I, I believe, and it's not because I ever had to come to believe anything or make a leap of faith or anything, but just looking back on what worked in my life, I believe it all started with me daring to dream and visualize exactly the life I wanted for myself. Mm, that's awesome. So at the beginning of The Magical Path, you share the following intention, with, which I just love. Mm. It's the intention of this course to help develop a peaceful army of visionaries, artists, entrepreneurs, business people, teachers, and leaders who are transforming not only their own lives, but the whole world as well, creating a world that works for all in an easy and relaxed, healthy and positive way in its own perfect time for the highest good of all. Yes. Yes. So can you talk a little bit about that intention and then also how you've seen that peaceful of army, peaceful army, mm. of, army of visionaries evolve in the 35 years since you first started mm. New World Library? Mm -hmm. It's a natural evolution. I've found for myself, and I, I think it's true for almost everyone, we have to take care of ourselves first. We have to figure out how to make it work for us in some way. For us to be fulfilled, literally fulfilled, and then we have a lot to share with the world. And then it naturally evolves. You, 
you get your life working, doing what you love to do, and then you want to really help everyone in the world do what they love to do and help make a world that works for all. The whole idea has been evolving for hundreds of years. I, I remember hearing about Buckminster Fuller in the 60s who would go around talking about the world game, he said. He said, let's play a game imagining how we can somehow help everyone in the world move up. He talked about Maslow's pyramid of human needs. Help everyone in the bottom needs to be housed and fed, and we can do that. Then people need security. Then they need recovery and therapy and healing, maybe. Then they get into the realms of education. And once you get into education, you move to the top of the pyramid of self-realization or you know, what, what Maslow called self-actualization, which I loved. So Buckminster Fuller in the 60s, now almost 50 years ago, was saying, we now have the technology, we have the resources to house and feed and heal and educate everyone on the planet. So that's the great work ahead of us to figure out how to really do that. We have the resources. They are just not getting distributed to the people. And in the book, you include a wide variety of exercises and techniques for invoking the power of magic in your life. And I'm wondering if you have a favorite technique from the book and if you could give us an example of how you used it to manifest something in your life. Oh, oh I definitely have a favorite because I do it flat on my back. And I'm, I'm lazy, as I said. So, uh, And it's true, half the time I fall asleep when I do this. So much that it's become a joke around my family in the afternoon when I say I'm going to go meditate. They say, oh yeah, meditate. <laughs> they literally do that. And it's true, half the time I fall asleep. But the other half the time I have a, a very excellent meditation that has changed my life from the first time I did it. And you can summarize it all in a way in just three breaths and then you can take it anywhere. So. I can very simply and easily just guide people through it. All I do is have people close, close their eyes, just take a deep breath, and as you exhale, just imagine a wave of relaxation from head to foot down through your body. Take another deep breath, and as you exhale, let your thought go. Take a third deep breath, and as you exhale, relax, relax, even deeper, and look within. What you see is a field of light. Eckhart calls it presence. What you feel is your presence, your being. That field of light is the realm of magical creation. That field of light is the realm of spiritual realization. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is within. Then within that field of light, you can heal your body, sending healing energy anywhere. You can even heal other people. I've seen that work wonderfully to be with other people and heal them. You can even imagine that light turning a deep blue and you attract to yourself wealth and abundance. You can do all kinds of things with that healing light. And that's the essence of what I got from a little book on magic I got when I was 21. And that's the essence of what I still do today. And you, you've, you've used that to manifest a lot in your life? A lot. The older I get, the simpler I see everything. And now I just, I see it just takes two simple steps. One, dare to dream. Dare to dream in that in your creative mind, in your imagination. You can just call it your imagination. In your imagination, dare to dream the life you want in five years. And see that the next steps toward there are very obvious and simple. Just a series of simple steps, and you take those steps. Then the only other thing you have to do is deal effectively with all the doubts and fears that inevitably rise, arise and, and, and undermine our dreams. And that's the work. First you dare to dream, then you deal with those doubts and fears. A lot of the magical path are different ways to deal with those doubts and fears. There's many different ways. From just the Zen approach to just let it go, let it go, let all thought go. That includes every doubt and fear. 
and just take the next step. Or there's the deep therapy of what we call the core belief process that's in there, where you really work with those doubts and fears and see what beliefs are underlying and change those beliefs. Our beliefs are not etched in stone. Our beliefs are not true in themselves. Many people have different beliefs, so that means they're not universally true whatsoever about time and money and success. So our beliefs are not true in themselves, but they become true in our experience if we believe them. So once we identify our deep underlying beliefs, we can change them. And it's not difficult to do that. When I look back on my path, I can see all the conflicting beliefs I had in my 20s and early 30s, how they totally worked against me, and that's why I was a poverty case. But then, getting into my early 30s and by my mid-30s, I was changing my beliefs. I believed deeply through my 20s that I was a fool with money, I was out of control, I just didn't understand money. I was an idiot. I believed that. That was my deep belief. So, of course, I was a total poverty case. If I ever made money, it was right through my hands. Once I realized that, in my mid-30s, when I was trying to build this company and losing money every month because I had that belief, once I realized that, I started changing that belief. I started affirming. Every time anxiety would arise, I would affirm its exact opposite. I started, I said several thousand times to myself when I was 35, I am sensible and in control of my finances. I'm creating total financial success in an easy and relaxed manner in a healthy and positive way. That affirmation turned my life around. Mm, powerful, powerful. The word magic could be a little off-putting for those with the more left brain and logical approach to life. What would you say to them about your book and what it offers? If they have any negative connotations about magic, they can just use another word. They can call it the direct path, the effective path. They can call it strategic planning, because it just boils down to making a plan. It's visualizing a goal and making a plan. The words aren't important, and so don't get hung up on the words. Find the words that work for you. I, I say in the book, it's a, it's a long book. It's much longer than I thought it'd be. I thought it'd be shorter because I just wanted to include the simple things I did over the years. And it kept growing and growing as I, as I would wake up at 3 a.m. thinking, oh, I did this and I did that. But I say pe to people right in the beginning, just take what you need and leave the rest. It's simple. It's not complicated to even create the life of your dreams and even make this world a world that works for all. The, the methods, the way to do it, the practices, are simple. And for me, they have to be simple. And so much of it is just a matter of getting our subconscious mind, our incredibly powerful subconscious mind, if you want to look at it this way and use this vocabulary. It's getting it to support our dreams rather than work against us in any way. Or another way to say it, it's getting all our inner sub-personalities on the same sheet of music, working toward a goal. It's having our inner visionary say to the inner critic and critical parents and vulnerable child. It's having a meeting with all our inner voices and having our inner visionary say, look, I have a dream and I want your support in this dream. Inner critic, I want you to, to contribute and show me the best steps to take. Help me out, help me be discriminating, but don't rain on my parade. This is my dream. I'm in charge here. I'm going to go for this. You support me. You get yourself, yourself, all on the same sheet of music. Eckhart Tolle summed it up in one brilliant way in The Power of Now. He, in a way, it sums up everything in the book. He just said, get the inside right and the outside will fall into place. I've gone from total poverty to real success and better yet, to from real anxiety to a state of inner peace. And it's been very simple, and 99% of the work is internal. It really is. Once you get it internally clear, then the steps to take are very simple. Mm. Well, thank you so much for outlining those steps for us in The Magical Path so that more of us can create the life of our dreams and work together to create a world that works for all. Thank you for appreciating my work. Thank you. Ha, <laughs>